white keys. And I'm just going to change this a little bit so that you can just see the keyboard. There we go. Black keys and white keys on the piano. We take them for granted, don't we, as pianists? Um, and yet there is kind of a terrain, there is a geography to the black keys and the white keys, which once you've been playing the piano for quite a few years, your fingers know where they're going. They know their way around, or at least we think they do. Actually, I'm not sure that's quite so true. Um, but I think with our younger pupils and beginners of all ages, including adults, and actually it's a bit further than beginners, into elementary as well, we can often take for granted the complexity of how this feels. Now I've been doing, hello by the way everybody, Sally here. I've been doing quite a lot of work um, with some of my students on whole steps and half steps, tones and semitones. Doesn't really matter what we call it, I don't think. So I've been doing, of course, a lot of sol fa. So we've been doing do, re, mi, fa, so, so, so. Once a duck fell in a well. Hence all the ducks around and about. And of course, you know, it's it, it's it's a good song to use because we can then go do, re, whole step, re, mi, whole step, mi, fa, half step, fa, sol, whole step. And we say, yes, okay, so mi, fa is always a half step and that's the beauty of sol, fa is that it always is a half step, mi, fa. And that's good and that's really very simple in a way to understand that that rule that mi fa half step golden rule if you like however when we come to apply that to the piano that's not always quite as easy for the children to see and for them to see and understand the half steps between the white and the black and then the half step between the white and the white it's not always apparent now if when I teach face to face, I would immediately get out something like this, my my floor keyboard, and we we would be crawling all over this and putting rubber, you know, little little uh, maybe the ducks even traveling up from white to black, from white to white, and we'd be looking at the patterns and and spotting those, and then transferring that onto the piano, and I might even use it like that this afternoon with my some of my kids. Um. Face to, um, online though, what I've been doing recently is I've been asking the children to play up with a finger two all the half steps. So, and I would example it first and demonstrate white to black, black to white, white to black, black to white, white to white, etc. Yeah, and get them to go up. Noticing that when they play the black notes, they, they go in and out, don't they? There's a little bit of technique here as well, doing it this way. The arm isn't static, it has to move. And then, so we'd then identify those as being the half steps, and then we'd play the whole steps. And what I would ask them to do again, one finger, finger two, but now my left hand's are going to come in, because it's going to play, or it's going to sit on the note in between. So I'm going to go... Black, white to white with the black note here yeah I think you can just about see that and then white to white and my left hand would sit here now this one's the tricky one isn't it because of course my left hand's going to sit in here on the F and my right hand's going to go white to black and then black to black black to black black to white and that can take a bit of time and a bit of thinking about it so that then helps the, the child then begin to be able to construct knowing where those white notes and black notes are. However, what happens when we move it to D? What happens when we move that to D? First thing to recognise, and I'm not sure we do recognise this enough, it feels different under the fingers. So you could say, just move it on to D and you know, what are they going to play? will tell them that that isn't quite right because of course you can't just move it on to D because the whole feel of the D pentachord is different from the C pentachord why is that well on the C pentachord and if you've got a piano just go and try it out on the C pentachord all your fingers are on the white key so they're on a flat surface and all of them are playing probably at the same point on at the end of your 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 finger here and 
yep, they're, they're, fairly, they're fairly equal in how they feel on the piano. They're not curved, you know, they're not curly under like that because you don't want that because if you just do that, feel the amount of tension. Nor are they straight because actually my third and fourth don't fit in. So they're just nicely in a little duck beak as I always like to tell my kids that's a really nice shape to get them to do. See, and I happen to like ducks, don't I? Um, so, duck beak shape. But then if I move it on to D, now I know, my third finger knows, I'm going to go on the F sharp. But of course, if you put that there, how does it feel, Sally? Okay, so the F sharp with my finger three, first of all, it feels higher than the rest of them. And it feels a bit awkward, But if I'm really honest, because the two is lower and the four... It cl feels closer, even though it's not, it feels closer. Um, and the other thing about the F sharp is that it's thinner, so it also feels more precarious. And just have a go away and I, I, go away and have a little play by yourself and just think about and feel how those different shapes are in your fingers. Because of course the left hand is different again, because of course in the left hand we've got finger three and two closer together so we can't say that once you've done one hand you do the other oh finger three and two feel really close together so just go and be curious go and explore different pentachords different scales and how the different jog the feel of them on the piano changes according to the geography of the notes and the arrangement of the notes hope that's helpful whole steps half steps tones and semitones and actually transferring it onto the piano. So thank you to everybody who's watching. Yep, hope you thank you all so much for watching. And I'm just going to give a big shout out to my brother-in-law, David Cathcart, who is also a piano teacher. And so David, I hope you find that a useful teaching tip for this week. All right, that's lovely. See you all later. Thanks for watching and happy teaching.